Very good morning and welcome to Lebanon. We are in Beirut, which is so exciting. Yep. Somewhere we've wanted to come for quite a long time. Can't wait to explore. Been here for a few hours, looks amazing. We're gonna check out what there is to do in this beautiful city. Let's get straight into the video. So our first stop on the tour of Beirut is the Roman Baths. Yeah, so behind us is the cistern which held the water. They, the Romans built an aqueduct, viaduct. The Romans built an aqueduct on the Beirut River directly to here to feed the Roman Baths which is a little bit further than on the hill. Behind me is where they stored the water that supplied the Roman Baths. Let's go and look. Behind us are the actual baths that the Romans used. They were a meeting place. Uh, people moved between the different temperatures of water from warm to hotter, and then there was a cooling bath as well. The little columns that you can see made of terracotta, uh, above those would have been a marble floor. Underneath there would be fires which would heat the marble and heat the water also. The area that we are in is Surreal Hill, which is where the Parliament building is and the government offices, and then these beautiful Roman baths. We'll leave a link to the places in the description box below so you can check out for yourself. While they bathed, they would have been serenaded by musicians and uh, there would also be jesters entertaining them while they had a bath, which is really cool. Uh, after the baths, they would go into the cooling basin or the cooling pool below and then they would be massaged by uh, therapeutic oil massage. Sounds fun. I think I need a Roman thermal bath and a therapeutic oil massage right about now, actually. Lucy? I think you look might be out with that one. While you're at the Roman baths, just above me on the hill is the Parliament building, which houses the Lebanese government and is the headquarters of the Prime Minister. There's also a beautiful clock tower there without a face. So, don't know what happened to that, we'll find out and let you know. Bit difficult to film, there's barbed wire everywhere, security boxes, security guards, so we're gonna be a little bit we're gonna be a little bit careful and respectful and film it from a distance. Just at the bottom of the hill from the Roman baths, you turn a left, there's a beautiful restored cathedral. Um, St. Louis, the cathedral of St. Louis. Uh, one guy let us in just said take some pictures and go, but uh, really worth two minutes to have a look. It's beautiful. I've just come back down from the cathedral and there's some strange courtyard with some really strange Easter Island scary figure type things happening, which... I don't know what they are yet, but we're going to try and find out. So the rock sculpture things are just basically the entrance way to the Beirut Souk. A little bit further down there's an Isle of Beirut sign, great for the picture opportunity. Just being invaded by about 3,000 kids jumping off a sightseeing bus. Um, also next to that there's um, a remnants of a building called Prayer Corner, so it's the last surviving part of it. It's a small dome, very pretty. Just behind me is, it's called the Roman Colonnade, Colonnade Street. So when they were building the souk in the 1990s, they uncovered some Roman remains. Uh, the floor beneath me is some remnants. Very, very nice tiling mosaics. Looks beautiful. This area, since it's been restored, the rents are super sky high. The only people that can afford them are the big brands. There's a Hermes, there's a Breitling shop. Um, and I think that's about it. This is a 
strange city. There's so much mix of old and new and war-torn and shiny big buildings. It's and a, broken. There's a lot of broken. Yeah, a lot of broken. Well, we just walked through the souk. Um, Not a souk as maybe you would think of a souk. It's more of a sh rebuilt shopping centre. It was an old souk. Yeah, years ago. But now it's just a bunch of empty buildings. Yeah, it's really sad looking. It's been renovated in 1994 in the late 90s. Still going on actually uh, after the Civil War. A lot of the shops have been rebuilt. Um, the only shops that are open are the expensive ones the Hermes, the Breitlings, Calvin Klein's, that kind of thing. The ones that have got deep pockets somewhere that are yeah. still managing to stay open. And the ones that are closed, some have been open, for example, Zara looks like it's been open and it's closed again. Yeah. A few others. Uh, but it's sad, it's sad. Hopefully, um, in the future, the city will rebuild itself. It seems to be doing it, it's just nice. Yeah, it's like, a really nice, feeling city. Nobody bothers you, it's quite quiet. I like this place. And from where we've just been up on that vantage point, you could see the mountains with the snow on. Yeah, cool. I'm Let's really find, excited. Let's go and find some more. Just a little up from the the souks, there's some beautiful streets. Look like Paris, like Parisian Street. Beautiful. Beautiful old restored buildings. And then maybe another 200 meters up, there's some like blown up, burnt out shops which is absolutely bizarre. Anyway, we've just arrived at Place des Etoiles, which is Star Square, called Star Square because there's seven or six streets uh, leading to the centre. There's a beautiful clock tower in the middle, there. Over there, there's a Hagen dazs shop, which has just been, I don't know, it must have been damaged in the port explosion, I guess, like so many things around here. But everything's still inside, the like counters and the seats and it's the like upstairs. They just shut the shop one day and never came back and again. And then forgot to lock the doors. Yeah. It's really strange. It's a beautiful place, a beautiful city, but there's just a mixture of everything. I don't quite know what's happening. So to get up to the clock tower, you have to go through like a. There's an army checkpoint. Yeah, an army checkpoint. So we're a little bit confused. It said somewhere online that it was closed due to a kind of protesting. We spoke to one of the soldiers there and he just said, where are you from? Something about Michael Owen and David Beckham when we told him we were from England in the letters inside. I think they, do, they are just being very cautious, which is understandable and they're trying to deter any large groups from gathering or meeting in certain places, but if you show an interest and speak to them, they're quite happy to let you look. But everywhere, all the like main historic points have all got information signs, which is really good actually, because it shows you pictures of what it used to be like pre-war, post-war, in between, so it gives you a really good sense of the city and how it's changed and how it's grown and developed. So just next to the clock tower down a few steps there is a cathedral, so it's the Orthodox Cathedral of St George, just being inside it's absolutely beautiful. It is stunning, so it was 14th century? Yeah, originally built in the 14th century and then has undergone a couple of rounds of reconstruction, the latest being in about 2003, where they have repainted some of the ceilings. They did and a the walls. fantastic job, it's the most beautiful, serene place. There's no one around no, it's anywhere. So quiet. If this was anywhere else in the world, there'd be thousands of tourists, yeah. but there's just us. Uh, at the back of the cathedral, there's a, a chapel of the Virgin Mary Chapel? Yeah, but it's the light of. Virgin Lady Mary. of the Light, something anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway, That's there's a chapel backside of the cathedral. Just got the guy off from his lunch, he was eating a shawarma or something. These letters inside, not very happy. But being inside for two minutes, only a small few yes. metres square. Tiny and nowhere near us. It's very plain and ordinary in comparison to the cathedral. And unlike anywhere else, it's free. Make a donation if you wish to. Yeah, a little candle, which is nice, which I like to do in any church. Well, the area around the square, there's church, Mosque, church, cathedral. Yes. A it's mix of religions. Everywhere is just like intertwined together. Which so, is so peaceful. So just behind us is the mosque. We're just gonna go around there and have a walk now. I think we're gonna try and find some Lebanese food. Yes, please. Our only taste of Lebanese food has been nothing actually. No, we haven't eaten anything yet. No so. food in Lebanon so far. Let's go and either find the mosque and eat some food or eat some food and find the mosque. Either, either way, way, we'll be back with you shortly. Also next to the church, there's some of what look like Roman ruins. I uh, don't know what they are exactly, but I'll try and find out and leave any information in the description box. Anywhere else in the world, this place would be heaving. The coffee shops would be full, there'd be chairs out on the pavement. 
it's just silent. There's just no There's nothing. nobody. The odd odd tourists, but it's really quiet. Just a big roundabout car park currently, but over the years has been a place of great turmoil. Way back to the late 1700s, where people were here protesting during the Ottoman rule, and Christians and Muslims were here together fighting for the same thing a release of prisoners. They didn't release the prisoners, instead, they brought them here and hung them. There was a lot of big artillery left here from the Russians. And then, as late as going back to 2005, after the Valentine's Day massacre, there was huge protests here, and it's quite eerie feeling actually. The statue is full of bullet holes, and it's a steel statue, and it's covered in graffiti, and it's quite a strange feeling actually. But again, it's it's kind of peaceful, but it just makes your heart feel a bit funny. We just walked a little way up from Martyr Square, a couple of hundred meters, and we have arrived at the Muhammad Ali Amin Mosque, otherwise known as the Blue Mosque. Um, it used to be a prayer corner, apparently. Um, 2003, the mosque was built, and I believe the last president or one of the last presidents of um, Lebanon is buried inside. Well, it's a beautiful place. So we walked around from the cathedral that we were before um, and there's a viewpoint for, since we found out they are actual Roman ruins, it's so just behind me, so next to the Blue Mosque, that's where you can find them. And I think we're going to go inside and see what we can see inside. Just to know it's the largest mosque in the whole of Lebanon. Unfortunately, as you can see, the mosque is closed today. Uh, it is a Friday. I guess that's the reason. It'd be nice to see what's inside. Maybe we can come back another day and check it out. So in our search for some food, we're going to go to try and find a very famous Lebanese restaurant. To it's called Le Chef. Serves authentic, fantastic Lebanese food. And it was featured on the Anthony Bourdain series, that it, well, program that he did here. So we're really excited to go and see it because we've watched that program, I don't know how many, but hours and hours. So it'll be really cool. So the place where the restaurant is, is in the affluent area called the Safi District. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of upmarket buildings, offices and posh shops. So coupled with the fact that it's been on a TV show, I'm expecting the prices to be slightly higher than normal. This street that we're walking down currently is a mix of old, like still really old buildings. There's another church and then there's big shiny hotels and offices in, interspersed between it Theatres and eclectic shops. Yeah. Well, let's go and find some food because I'm yeah, starving. I'm just found a Le Chef restaurant, it's just along the main street, next to all the other bars and pubs and cafeterias and restaurants. Yeah, it looks very unassuming from the outside. Let's hope there's a table. <laughs> really pulled out, that food was so good. First taste of proper Lebanese food. food. First off, they brought us some olives and rocket, and then we had two starters of hummus with meat and a lavender with cucumber bread and, and some, garlic. And garlic with some bread on the side, and then oh, we also had spicy potatoes. They were excellent. Would highly recommend those. And then we had two mains. One was a fish and rice dish, and one was a meatballs in a sesame sauce with rice. Both really good. The fish was my personal favourite. And beer. And, and some Beirut beer. Beirut first time beer. 
First time having a local beer. It's like the Almazza, but I prefer the Beirut. Yeah, Very I nice. do as well. So I think that might be the first time that a meal has ever cost over two million. Two point two five million pounds. <laughs> Absolutely mad. So that works out as well. Eighteen. About twenty pounds. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Eighteen pounds. Yeah. English so. pounds. Can't go wrong really. Lower family, but the place is fantastic, easy to find. Leave the link in the description box below. I expected the, it to be, it is busy and it's a quick turnover. There's no kind of sitting and chatting afterwards. It's in kind of in, eat, out. But I did expect there to be a really long line when we got here and there wasn't. We must have, we probably timed it between lunch and dinner, so. Probably about 20 seats in there total. But the people are friendly, yeah, very so helpful. Um, and also have to note that the menu is typed, but the prices obviously as the economy has changed and prices have increased. I don't know how long the place has been here, but the first on the menu is 5,000. It's been scribbled out, like Lucy said, scribbled out, scribbled out, and the price is now 250,000. Just shows the decline in the value of the Lebanese currency. But cheap beer, $1.50 roughly. Really cheap. No complaints. Gonna walk a bit down the same street, the Safia area, uh, see what else to find. Maybe another beer. Chef on is Guru Street. Uh, there's loads of quite a few bars, restaurants, coffee shops, little independent shops all along, all the way along the street. It's quite nice actually. Nice to sit and watch the little girl bang. Uh, we've got another beer. Lee's got an Almazza, and I've got an Almazza. Like to try. That's quite nice, but I think the Beirut is my favourite so far. <laughs> I'm currently Lee's least favourite person. <laughs> Just at the side of Le Chef the restaurant on Rue Juru, uh, there is some steps. Lucy's currently counting how many. If you walk to the top of the steps, there are some little cafes, coffee shops, wine bars, uh, painting schools, and a few little interesting things on the way up. And on the way down, it's the same thing. Cafes, wine bars, painted schools, coffee shops. But this area of Beirut is very nice. Cypher or Safai area. Just outside of downtown. Very nice. Lots to see, lots to do. We've done it all in about half a day, but excellent place to visit. Hundred and ninety-five up and down. <laughs> Next stop on the must see do Beirut list is the Holiday Inn. The infamous war hotel of the Civil War here in Beirut. It's quite eerie, it's made my legs go all funny again, like standing in Marks Square yesterday. So, a little bit of history basically, the, the road that we stood on is the Green Line. This is the line between the East Beirut and West Beirut in the Civil War, between the Muslim and the Christian community. The hotel behind us. Here is uh, the Holiday Inn. So it was a key strategic point for both sides to win, and there was tumultuous, terrible battles yeah. to win control of this hotel. A lot of bloodshed and a lot of scary, scary situations, I think. A lot of death. Yeah. The hotel still stands in the middle of the hotel district, dead, dying, decaying, waiting to see what happens to it. I don't know. It's um, full, it's riddled with bullet holes. It's massive ones in the side and then all around it there's like big shiny buildings again. We'll just see if we can get closer and have a look but we can't get inside. Yeah, I, think I think it's still army control has been quite a strategic key landmark in the city. Something definitely to have a look at if you're in downtown Beirut. Definitely.
the holiday in. Oh, and my knees are like jelly. It's a very strange feeling. Provoke some thoughts. Yeah. There's some really good documentaries you can watch about it. There's an Al Jazeera one, which is, I would highly recommend it. It was really interesting that we watched. We'll leave the link to that in the description box. But if you're in Beirut, you can't miss this building no. towering over the, the skyline of downtown Beirut. So I think at one point it was, it was the highest vantage point over the city, which is why it was so strongly contested who controlled it, because then they could see what was happening across the rest of the city. It still stands here, full of bullet holes, bomb holes. Yeah. Just a, Weird. a memory to what happened here, rising out of the buildings around it, I guess, that have been restored and glass and shiny. Oh yeah. We don't realise how lucky we are. No. One more thing to do while you're in downtown Beirut is the, the marina. Yeah, it's really nice down here. A few restaurants and bars. Quite expensive, as you can imagine. Stood on the are arena. Stood on yeah, the but you can come <laughs> down, arena. have a beer, a shisha and some food at probably triple the price that you pay anywhere else. $3.50, $4 for a beer. We were paying $1.52 $2 in downtown, but yeah, it's worth coming down for an hour. Yeah, nice in the evening, look at all the lights, and you can see quite a lot of Lebanon in the distance and up to the mountains with the snow on them. Just not in the night time. Night time for beers, day time for mountain views. <laughs> Behind me is the Phoenicia. It's one of the hotels in the war that they tried to take control of uh, because, it's just, because it was a strategical, tactical point for the military. Uh, it got damaged just as much as the Holiday Inn. Uh, seems to have been repaired and is now back in operation. Not sure why the Holiday Inn isn't maybe damaged too much. I don't know, but we'll see what happens in the future. Behind us is Pigeon Rock, one of the landmarks to see. It's a massive naturally forming rock out at sea with a great big arch in it. There's plenty of people offering boat rides and things if you want to go and drive around it a bit more. Sail around it. You drive around in your boat. <laughs> well, in the boat cars. Yeah, so the, 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 the offering your boat trips around the rock is what Lucy's trying to say. Yeah. On the way down it's a little bit bumpy, so watch your step. It's a long way down. Um, there's a few viewing points on the way down. It's free to enter, which is really good. Yeah, you just wander down. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite close to the edge for my liking at several points. Down by Pigeon Rock, there are some concrete structures. They look like sea defences I guess, don't know if they're for coastal erosion or something to do with this civil war, but fantastic geometric shapes, if that's your thing. Pigeon Rock, well worth a visit, spend some more time if you want to, instead of just 10 minutes because Lucy's really hungry, so we're going to find some food, um, really nice place to visit. Didn't see a single pigeon, so quite disappointed. Pull your socks up Lebanon, so Pigeon Rock, just a short Uber ride from Hamra, yeah. which is where we're staying. Yeah, you get a nice walk along the Corniche now. We're gonna find, it's like there's some bars that overlook. Yeah. Did you rock? So we'll see if we can find a little drink and maybe a snack. 380,000 Uber, fri Uber price. Seems to be kind of a set price wherever we've yeah, been here, you know. Everywhere we go, it's 380,000, 380,000. But, uh, yeah, Pigeon Rock, look at that. Just along the main road behind me where Pigeon Rock is, there's a few cafe restaurants with a great view of Pigeon Rock. However, we went inside one. Very, very expensive. You're looking at 11 US dollars or 10 English pounds for just a simple shawarma. That probably cost a dollar anywhere else. So we're gonna walk around the coast uh, and see if we can find something inland a little bit. Probably better tasting, more local and not expensive. Also a few restaurants. Um, closed down, bad state of repair, I don't know, just a sign of the times for Lebanon I guess. Hopefully things will improve soon. 
walking along the Corniche at Hamra, uh, we've seen better days. There's a kid's um, fairground, big wheel, ferris wheel, whatever you want to call it. Some rides shut down, ice cream parlours, cafes, restaurants, all um, gone to the dogs, shall we say. Again, better days ahead, I hope. We walked down the Corniche on the same side as Pigeon Rock and we found a local restaurant next to the big lighthouse. It's called Abu Manoir. Um, you can choose your own fish, they'll cook it for you. They also have a full menu, delicious. Yeah, really, we had really some mutabal, some hummus, some fries, some shatsuka, a half a beautiful grilled juicy chicken, and some bread, a couple of beers, $20. Yeah, really cheap in comparison to what they were charging further round. It was maybe triple that price for some things. Just at the restaurant on the other side, it was $11 for a shawarma. I think I've already said, super expensive. We've got somewhere nice. Come along to this place. Delicious, well recommended. So a little bit further down from the lighthouse, there's some more restaurants by the sea. Nice little walk along the Corniche that stretches for miles and miles along the coast of Beirut and further I imagine but it's really nice, it's all paved and benches to sit on, so busy because it's the weekend, there's loads of people out. People making all kinds <laughs> of fitness. <laughs> and generally just having a wander and a chat. Yep. Walking around, lots of walking, lots of cycling, lots of dress ups. This guy's still going. Um... <laughs> lots of people just enjoying the weekend. How many? I don't know, don't count. 102. <laughs> came around the corner from our hotel to a place called Hamra Street. A uh, very busy place, expected a few more bars to be open. We found this one in the background called London Bar. Very friendly place. Yeah, Please. really good. Uh, free shots in the bar that we're in. It's called a, a doo-doo or a voodoo. It's got lemon Good. Hammer Street itself is there's lots of shops, coffee bars, shisha bars, that kind of thing. Uh, we expected more bars. Yeah, I'm like bar bars. More bars, but the next street along with their music playing, so here we are. And there's two next to each other. London Bar and then one next to it as well. But London Bar would definitely recommend it was really good. Oh, <laughs> We just came down to Hamra Street, which is famed for its uh, eclectic shops and nightlife. We walked down the main road, which is actually Hamra Street itself. Uh, yeah, there wasn't much going on down there. It was quite quiet, really. 
lots of shops, coffee bars, etc. So I had a walk around, went to the street that runs parallel, adjacent to Hammer Street, and there is some really cool bars. Yeah, some really good bars. It's busy because it's the weekend, but I think we'll come back tomorrow and see what else we can find. Yeah, playing Arabic music, yeah. got lights down. To go left. Lots of atmosphere, Lucy can't walk in a straight line <laughs> as usual. Because I've had three beers and two shots, what do you expect? Good morning! Just grabbed a couple of croissants, a cheese, and a chocolate. Souk Al Ahad is behind us, which translates to Sunday market. So it's on on a Sunday. I think it runs from about 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Kind of a flea market, a bit of everything. Looks a bit market. hectic, actually. Yeah, let's go and see what we can find. Kind of sweet pastry slice, it's disgusting. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Time again, just found a fresh falafel stall. Lucy's got a couple of pieces of falafel. I fancied a sandwich, but it's kind of a little bit bigger than I thought, to be fair. But let's just give it a try. Delicious. So I got the massive, enormous falafel sandwich, got some fries, some falafel, some salad in there. Lucy's got two pieces of falafel freshly cooked. Everything in one dollar. 100,000 Lebanese pounds, which is dollar, which is less than a dollar. Absolute bargain. Fresh cooked falafel, slightly different to ones we've had before. Can't beat it for two things for like a dollar. Halfway down the falafel sandwich, I had to give it to Lucy to finish. The baton's been passed. So it's all pretty much used stuff, there's some nice little food stalls in there, uh, a lot of used trainer stalls, managed to pick up two pairs of Converse, brand new essentially, uh, $5 for Lucy's, $3 for mine, absolute bargain, yeah. uh, and a few snacks, yeah some falafel, sandwich, a little pastry, 
Yeah, I can't complain at that. That was a nice. That was quite so, good. So some retro stuff, some retro mobile phones, electricals, uh, that kind of thing. Some of it looks like people have just kind of emptied their houses and their lofts out, and God knows where some of it's come from. It's a fun. A fun couple of hours to yeah. explore around, well worth a visit if you're in Beirut. Yeah, definitely uh, worth doing. Locals are friendly again. Now we're going to go and find the Armenian district to have a look around. Which is about a kilometre and a half from here. Just going to walk across the river and see if we can find, find some lunch there. Yeah. sit down and find a World Cup relic, shall we say. just on the Corniche at Hamra. Gonna get um, a couple of drinks and some food and hopefully see the sunset. We got a chicken wing platter, a spicy sausage platter, also some fries, fresh bread, and a little side salad. Things that you must do when you come to Lebanon, although we didn't get a chance unfortunately, is to try some Lebanese wine. <clears throat> so there's some wine tasting tours to do. Uh, most of the wine in Lebanon comes from a place called the Becca Valley. We get a chance to go there, but we've got a couple of bottles to try. We've got a couple of the smaller bottles, uh, half bottles, they work out about $3 each. Plus I've got a reserve bottle, a full bottle, which works out about $6. But Want to give it a try? First taste of Lebanese wine. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to be like, but we shall give it a go. It 
It's a full glass, there's no time for half glasses. We have to be at the airport 9.30 tomorrow morning. Um, so we need to finish this bottle and two half bottles. So two bottles. Cheers. Cheers. bitter aftertaste but it's quite smooth from before that. <coughs> okay? It went down those it's Lucy's. <laughs> That's my expert sommelier. That's the way I was looking for sommelier. Yeah there we go and see. It's a bitter taste <laughs> but it's fine before that. <laughs> It's smooth as soon as you drink it, but then it's a little bitter afterwards. Okay. Not the worst wine I've ever drank. In fact, we'll leave a link to some wine tasting, <laughs> um, some real wine tasting that you can do in Lebanon. <laughs> Lucy'sWineTasting.com, probably not going to be the best thing to do. Leave some links to some wineries in the Bacar Valley. Cheers, Lebanon. Cheers, Lebanon. You've been amazing. I cannot wait to come back and explore more of this country. It is beautiful, the people are friendly. The food is great. Yeah, can't wait to come back. So we started out here with some uh, mixed ideas, I guess. After being here for less than a day, we kind of, I think I did anyway, fell in love with the country, with yeah. the city, Beirut especially. Uh, people are so friendly. So There's friendly. so much to do. The food's amazing. Uh, it's on a must-do city list. 100%. Without a doubt, make sure you come to Lebanon, to Beirut. There are some other things we didn't get time to do. The Beirut University is literally just so it's behind the Ameri us. American University of Beirut, but I think you can go in as a visitor, but over the weekend, probably. It was closed today when we tried to go in, so maybe try looking at going in the week. Yeah, it's closed on a Sunday. This is the cable car, Our Lady of Lebanon statue, and if you want to travel a little bit further, there looks like a fantastic snow ski resort. If you look at the back of the video, there's some um, some scenes with snow covered mountains. Yeah. That's a place called Faraya. You can go, it's about an hour's, hour and a 15 minutes drive or taxi from Beirut Centre. So we've left a couple of things to do for when we return and we will definitely do that. Yeah, 100% will come out. Absolutely a beautiful city. Broken, beautiful, bullets, barbed wire, but absolutely amazing. Yeah, Thank all, you, all Lebanon. All these for Beirut. If you've got any value from the video and give you any ideas, please don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Leave a link in the description box below to anything we've done, all the places, locations, etc. Give the video a like if you liked it and we'll see you in the next one.